Well, once again, I am, uh, I'm glad that you've joined us for this Sunday as we gather in the name of Jesus, uh, all scattered throughout the Lima, County, Lima Allen County area to be uh, reminded of who God is and for who we are and what God may be calling us into. For those that may be newer to our church family, my name is Brian Robertson. I'm certainly glad that you're streaming our online service. And if you don't have a church home that you're regularly a part of, we hope that this morning is encouraging to you and that you may find that we're a welcoming place and that when we are able to gather in person again, we are certainly hopeful that you will come and, and join us. For those who are covenant partners or regular attenders here at Crossroads, it's always good to share time with you, to be in some way, shape, or form together with you as we remind each other and equip each other to follow Jesus more abundantly, more faithfully with our whole lives. And I want to encourage all of us to check out our online campus. There's places there to get information, resources, send in your prayer requests, to connect with our church family in ways that you uh, really desire to. There's all sorts of information there on our, on our online campus. If you're wanting to participate in worship by the giving of your tithes and offerings or or, su or submit your prayer requests or anything else, all that is there on the online campus. So I invite you to go and spend some time there, limacrossroads.org, and you should be able to find the, the campus there. Well, we're beginning a brand new series this morning. We're going to be in the Gospel of John for the next few weeks, and the writer of John wants us to know who Jesus is. He wants to have a clear understanding of who Jesus is, and having understood who Jesus is, then we would begin to believe in him as our Messiah. And when we believe in him as our Messiah, then we will experience an eternal kind of life, both now and into the rest of eternity. In the Gospel of John, Jesus makes seven I am statements. And these I am statements are significant because it's identifying himself with God himself. When, when God describes who he is in Exodus chapter 3, when he describes himself or identifies himself to Moses the very first time, and he says that his name is I am that I am. That phrase I am is the name that he will be known by for the all of eternity. This phrase I am signifies that he's the eternal, self-existing, forever one, never changing, that he is the I am the present eternal one. And when Jesus uses this phrase, I am, to describe himself, then he's making a significant statement, making it very clear that he's not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. He's not just one of many that's coming along, but he's actually claiming to be God himself. The I am statements are, are Jesus' designation or, or recognition of his divinity, to, that we ought to understand him as the divine God incarnate, that he is God himself that has come to be known to us. And as a church, Crossroads, well, we're, in, we're zeroing in on this understanding of who Jesus is because our mission statement is to invite people, wherever they are in their life with God, to invite them to apprenticeship to Jesus. Our focus is on Jesus as our Messiah, as our King, as our Lord. And we learn from him how to live this eternal life and how we can follow him and his ways fully so during this season of these next few weeks here more than things that we can do more than practical application of things to just go out and try these kinds of things we want to focus on the truths of who jesus is the nature of jesus what he claims to be especially in these i am statements and things we can understand about Jesus. And when we understand who he is and we learn about who he is through these I am statements, well, then it shapes how we follow him, how we understand his involvement in our life. In other settings, we've said that part of our apprenticeship to Jesus is learning to gaze at Jesus. While we glance at ourselves, we gaze at Jesus. And this series over the next few weeks as we're in the gospel of john we will help us to gaze at jesus to fix our eyes at him and who he is and who he claims to be as the divine second person of the trinity and as we understand as we gaze at jesus well that will impact our life it'll impact how we follow him and so this morning we want to look at this i am statement in john chapter 8 where jesus declares that he is 
the light of the world. It's recorded this way in John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now darkness from ancient times until all the way till now, darkness has been associated with terror or gloom or death or fear and chaos. That all resides in the darkness. Darkness is something to be avoided. Darkness is where the scary things happen. But when Jesus describes himself as light, well, there's a whole lot we can learn about Jesus, a whole lot we can unpack about the nature of Jesus in this one statement that he is the light of the world. But this morning, just for our time's sake, I want to highlight just three things that we see that we can understand about who Jesus is as the light of the world. And I, under, I pray that as we understand these three things, that wherever you are in your life with God, whether you've been pursuing Him for decades or you've been pursuing Him for minutes, that you will be encouraged to see Jesus for who He really is. And that will make all the difference. See, the first thing I want us to understand about light uh, as it regards to Jesus and His life is that light dispels the darkness. Light casts the darkness out. You might recall, if you are familiar with these things, the opening remarks of the Scriptures. Way back in Genesis, the earth was formless and void, and it was empty, and the Scripture says that darkness was over the surface of the deep until God spoke those powerful words. Let there be light. And there was light. And the darkness goes away. And order is restored. And order is brought. Notice, while there was full of darkness, the the earth was empty and and formless, and and chaos kind of ruled the day. But when light came, order was established. And God said it was good. It was good. While there still are areas of darkness, chaos and fear and gloom and terror, things that still happen in our world that we're unsure of, and darkness still seems to be there, the light, well, the light has come in Jesus, and the light will not be overpowered. This is what was read in our Scripture reading in the first part of John. When in John chapter 1, John describes it this way, he says that the light, meaning Jesus, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, has not overpowered it, cannot understand it. The light has more power than the darkness around it. And the light dispels darkness wherever it is. Jesus has come to dispel any notion of fear or gloom or doom or death or or chaos in our lives and in the world around us. He brings order out of chaos because Jesus is light. And He dispels the darkness. Wherever darkness is, it has no power against the light. It's not just in the world out there. It's not just on the cosmic level when God said, let there be light, that there was light in the universe. Well, that is true. He brings chaos out of, or he brings order out of the chaos. That is true. But he is the light of the world, but he's also the light in our personal life. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life in them. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. See, Jesus has come to dispel the darkness that we experience in in the world, but he's come to dispel the darkness that we experience in our personal life, in our hearts. Because we experience our own set of darkness. Periods of fear and loneliness and feeling like gloom and terror and even death. Most of us, if we're even at all self-reflective, well, we know what it's like to have a kind of a heavy dark cloud around us a darkness that we experience a fear that grips us and we don't know what to do it it could be short-lived or it could be longer and and utterly suffocating at times 
And when we experience a darkness of that kind, a loneliness or a gloom or, or some kind of thing that seems overwhelming to us and the sadness and the despair that we feel, we can run to anyone or anything else to push the darkness aside, to help us forget about the darkness, to just kind of numb the pain, if you will. We run to busyness and we keep ourselves busy all the time so we can forget how dark it really seems. We run to social media and to anything else to kind of fill our time because if we're just left to it by ourselves, we feel the weight of the darkness around us. Or, or we get busy shopping and Amazon is our best friend and we keep shopping after one thing after another to just kind of forget the darkness for a second. Just, just put it aside, anything and anyone to numb the pain of the darkness and the fear and the gloom that can weigh so heavy on us. The loneliness that we experience. But friends, much as we push these things aside, they're only short-lived. Our efforts against that is short-lived. But Jesus describes himself as the light. And when Jesus comes, when the light comes, well, he dispels all darkness. He dispels it cosmically, and he dispels it personally. And he reminds us that the darkness that we are facing the darkness that we are feeling, well, it's not the end of the story. It's not the end of it. It's an important truth I want us to wrestle with this morning, that we give power to darkness that it doesn't have in and of itself. Darkness is simply the absence of light that we give power to by dwelling on the darkness, by dwelling on the things that seem overbearing, but it doesn't have power in and of itself to defeat us. We give it power by dwelling on it and thinking about it and staying there. But when the light has arrived in the person of Jesus, then we don't need to fear the darkness any longer. We don't need to give it any more power. We don't need to give it any more thought. For He, the light, is present both now and for the rest of eternity. And His light shines brightly and dispels all darkness. Cosmically, and personally, for the darkness that we feel and the darkness we experience is nothing compared to the light of Jesus that comes to dispel our dark, all darkness. That's why as apprentices to Jesus, we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, the light of the world, for we will go through periods of time where it feels dark. And we'll be tempted to turn away and to give more attention to the darkness and the gloom and the things that frighten us and the loneliness and the fear may settle in. But we need to see, seek to fix our eyes on Jesus, the light. And when He comes, and when we fix our eyes on Him, well, the darkness isn't so daunting any longer. Before we know, the light of the world has come. And He's come to us. Friends, I don't know exactly what you're struggling with. I mean, I know some of the things that we collectively are struggling with as a community, but personally, I don't know all the darknesses that you are experiencing, the places of loneliness or fear or things that are gripping you in one way or another. I'd simply pray that you would allow the light of Jesus to bring hope and peace, for He is the light of the world. Second aspect of light I want us to understand is that light brings life, as Jesus said. When we come to the light, then we are freed from the bondage in which entangles us through the things that kind of trap us in and around ourselves. We have an eternal kind of life that is meant, that is meant for us, and we are freed in order to live. But we need the light of Jesus to shine on our lives, to reveal who we really are, and to lead us into the kind of life that Jesus has for us. We need the light of Jesus to, to shine in, to, to reveal, to remind us of who we are. It's what Pastor Jake was reminding us in the object lesson earlier is, as this words in our hearts that have been written there that we need to be reminded of that we only see when the light of Jesus comes near to us. And we're reminded of who we really are. And when we're reminded of who we are, well, that brings life. We're also reminded of areas in our life that need to be let, to, let go of and given over to the leadership of Jesus to be transformed in our life. And those are all good things that the light reveals in us and reminds us of who we are. 
But if we're honest, this morning there are times when, well, there are times when I prefer darkness over light. Because there's an area of who I am that I don't want exposed. There's an area of who I am that can bring up all sorts of insecurities and all sorts of, of doubts and Understand, and it unnerves me to have that part of me kind of revealed or exposed another, to other people, especially to God. Frederick Buechner, who's a pastor and author, he, he wrote it this way. He said, if there's a terror about darkness because we cannot see, there's also a terror about light because we can see. There's a terror about light because much of what we see in the light about ourselves and in our world we would rather not see. We would rather have not seen. I know at times I can resonate with that. I know there are times when I'd rather keep things hidden rather than exposed. And it can be unnerving and unsettling to be exposed by the light. But there's a promise in Jesus' words here that while we need to be exposed to the truth about who we are, and, and while that may be a little unnerving, a little unsettling. The promise is that that exposure, that revealing will lead us to life because light brings life. And friends, you and I were created to live in the light, to stop pretending, to stop the masquerade of trying to manage our image, but to find that Jesus is the source of all life and that his light, when we bring ourselves close to him, well, his light shines, and it brings life. Well, the third thing and third aspect about life, about light is that it lights our path. The light of Jesus lights our path. Jesus has come that we may not stumble around and, and make, make mistakes and fi find ourselves into harmful or destructive aspects of life. He's come to follow the light. He's come to light and illuminate our path, to, to light up where it is that we are to go to follow his way. And the following His way leads to an eternal and abundant and good life beginning now and, and following through the rest of eternity. And while His ways may feel countercultural, well, His light lights a path and illuminates a path for us to go. And that path leads us to eternal life with Him. And when we follow the light of Jesus and we step out of darkness and come close to Jesus, we will not wander around stumbling around in darkness, seeking to find our way, struggling with fear or disobedience or any kind of gloom around us, for we will have the light with us as we follow Jesus, the light of the world. And we will remind ourselves that light has overcome the darkness, that there's no need to fear that He is indeed guiding our steps. So light dispels the darkness, and light well, it reveals who we are. And light leads us to life, and light guides our path. But I want to close with a question for you. What is your darkness that you're struggling with these days? What are you wrestling with? What aspect of, of fear or doom or gloom or terror are you struggling with? Loneliness or, or worst-case scenarios fear of sickness or fear of not being enough or the financial burdens that may be around you. What is heavy in your life today? Whatever it is, would you take comfort in knowing that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that His light has come and He has come to dispel all darkness. He has come to lead you to life and to light your path as you follow Him. As we fix our eyes on Jesus, to be reminded that the darkness cannot overcome him, for light wins. And let that light remind you of who you are and what you are called to. And while light may expose us a little, and that may be unnerving, there's a promise there that those who will follow the light will have this light of life. And I pray that our vision would be captivated by Jesus as the light of the world to dispel all darkness and fear and terror and gloom in our life. Well, as I said, the purpose of this series is for us to practice gazing 
at the truths of Jesus, to practice a visual reminder of the nature of Jesus. So here's what I'm asking each of us to do for the remainder of this series. I want you to find a space in your home and create a a sacred space, a place for you to look upon during these next few weeks, to be reminded of who Jesus is. And when you feel overwhelmed or when you feel the light or the the experiences in your world begin to daunt or or to be heavy on you again, then you find yourself coming along again to this space. And may this sacred space remind you of who Jesus is, that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And may it draw your attention to the nature of Christ. And when we do this, we train ourselves to be people who keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and not on our external circumstances. And we remind ourselves that the experiences that we are going through, well, we go through them with Jesus trusting and believing that his ways really do lead to an eternal, abundant life. So this week, what I'm going to ask you to do is find a sacred space in your home and set up a candle and light that candle and keep it lit over these next few weeks. And when you pass by your lit candle, may it be a visual reminder to you that light has come to dispel darkness, to dispel the fear, dispel the gloom, dispel the loneliness, dispel the things that you may be faced with or gripped in your life. That light has come. I need that visual reminder, and I, I maybe think that you do too. A visual reminder, a space in your home, that this candle will be a reminder of you, of who Jesus is in your life. And each week we're going to add to that space. And each week we'll be reminded of who Christ is and keep our eyes firmly fixed on him, that our vision would be so captivated by who he is and the life that he brings to dispel all of our darkness and fear and will lead us to his glorious life. So let me pray for us and we'll go. Jesus, the light of the world, we pray that your light would shine in our life that your light would come near to us, reveal who we are, and remind us of your power over darkness, that you have indeed conquered the gloom and the death and the fear that so easily surrounds us, the loneliness that we feel, that you have come and you promise that those who come near you would have this light of life in us. I pray for my friends tonight that whatever they're facing, whatever they're going through, that they would experience you, the light of the world, and that your light would shine in our life and it would restore us to life with you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.